Hi, I'm Dana Samuelson, president of American Gold Exchange in Austin, Texas, and it is my honor today to interview Pamela and Marianne Aiden of the world-renowned Aiden Forecast, uh, now in its 42nd or 43rd year. And Marianne and Pamela are coming to me from their beautiful garden uh, somewhere in Costa Rica. Ladies, how are you today? Hi, how are you? Nice to be here with you, Dana. Well, I'm doing great, thanks. And it's really a privilege to be here with you. you know, I, I respect and uh, admire your work so much with the Aiden forecast that you put out monthly. And I want to say right at the top that it's one of the best values anyone can have if they want to learn about the natural resource sector, stocks and bonds, currencies, uh, and natural resource price movement on a monthly basis, uh, you put out your newsletter, and then also on a weekly basis, you give timely updates as well. And the reason I think I like your work so much is you don't really have a dog in the hunt. You're just reporting what you see and down for all these markets and the different factors that affect them. So thank you for the work that you do and uh, the fact that you are unbiased in, in how you look at these markets. Well, thank you well, very thank much. Thank you very much, yes. Well, you're welcome. It's well, it's well earned recognition. You're wo you're world renowned, and as I said, it's my honor to speak to you today. So, um, in New Orleans, I see you every year at the New Orleans Investment Conference, and I always look forward to your presentations. And last year, I thought that you gave a particularly uh, a prescient one that spoke about the different factors that impact the markets. There were six main factors. So, if we could just touch on them so people understand how you look at the markets. So um, Pamela, if you'd like to go first, the first topic you discussed were interest rates and how they affect all markets. I think people have seen how my wild the market uh, interest rates have been in the last couple of years. After being flat to zero, zero or low for 10 years, it was a shock to see interest rates sky high. Well, sky high for, compared to zero. It's really trying to get back to normal really. But that really um, put um, a damper on the markets. But now this year, like jumping to this year, um, the Fed is really trying to lower rates and that inflation is not letting them do it. And so, and with that, with all the commodities basically in a major bull market right now, I don't see how inflation is gonna go down very easily. And it's, there's a lot un, under underground that still is brewing in the inflation sector. So interest oh. rates are very important. They and we we did a study this last. Well, we've been we've yeah. had it that uh, compares gold with T bills, for example. Because these ninety day T bills move most closely with the Fed funds rate, and um, so you can see that they've been holding at above five percent this whole time. Once and then the Fed distance the Fed's been on hold, so those have stayed flat up at above five percent. While the long rates have been up and down below that. And uh, they've been pretty much up and down all year, not knowing which way the Fed's going to go. But lately, they've been rising. So we think the mega trend, mega meaning 40-year trend of interest rates has changed. That big rise that it had um, changed the whole picture of those 40-year down moves of the interest rates. So they, we think that is the biggest news for all markets for, for this year and the coming years is um, rates are on the rise. They may not go up screaming high. They could down, can moderate and go sideways a while. But basically, the major trend is towards the upward move. And this is what's going to affect the market. It's going to hurt, it's going to hurt the stock market eventually. And, it, um, and actually, interest rates tend to move with gold, which is really interesting. People don't think that way. They think it's inflation. And, and it is. Inflation certainly helps. But it's not only inflation. They, wrote, they declined together for 20 years. 30 years from 1980 to 2020 uh, to 20, 2000, excuse me. And they were just moved quietly down together without much fanfare. And then, they, and so this, they do move opposite at times, but they basically move together. So this rise is flat up to flat with the T bill, um, T bills and Fed funds. We think that's that's the move, but I think it's just going to keep going higher, and this will affect the markets. Well, that was the most important thing that I got from that section of your presentation was this is a big 40 year cyclical change from down to up. And basically, it's just getting started. And you're right. Commodity prices are all up this year. Inflation is staying sticky. 
And, um, you know, the Fed really doesn't have much room to wiggle right now. In fact, there's even talk about him raising rates, potentially. Exactly. He has really toned it down. Uh, and like no more, like maybe he'll do one just to keep people calm. But but basically, I don't, th or, or flat, maybe he'll just keep it flat. That would be the most neutral thing, is to keep it flat for this year. But we'll see what happens. But it's certainly, being an election year, and some things can happen differently. But basically, whatever it is fitting around this year, the trend is up. The trend is up. Yeah, that's a big, big change from the zero interest rate policy that everyone got used to and a lot of younger people think is normal, which, of course, exactly think is not normal. Right. I know. I think it's shocking for many people to even see that that and any there's nothing else but zero or a, a low. And that and that's a, a wake up call for many people and for the government paying the debt, the interest on the debt. That's another topic. But um, but yeah, it hurts a lot of people. Right. Well, since you brought up the debt, that is one of the other themes that you made in New Orleans. Uh, Marianne, would you care to talk about that? Well, <clears throat> as you know, the debt has been going up for years. That's like just something that's been happening. But what's happened in recent years is that it has just gone pretty much since the COVID time period. It has really kind of snowballed and it's gotten bigger and bigger. And the the scary thing or the thing that people are worried about now is like, okay, the, you know, the government can finance the debt. I mean, as it's been doing for 20, 30 years, but that interest rates as they're going up now, it's making the interest payment on the debt pretty much unaffordable. And if rates keep going up, as we suspect, because of this new mega uptrend, it's going to at some point create a financial crisis. Now, some people are calling it, you know, a, a complete collapse. Others are saying, oh, it's just going to mean huge inflation. At this point, it's still too soon to know exactly how it'll all evolve. But right now, already with just interest rates at 5%, T-bills, um, the debt or the interest on the debt, because the debt keeps growing, the interest on the debt is the second largest government expense more than defense spending and so and that it's going to keep getting pretty soon pass up everything and so that's going to be a real problem when people just uh, they, when the government is having trouble paying the, the interest on the debt and then what happens and so do they just print their way out and create a big huge inflation um, do they go broke I don't think so but you know, they, there's there's not many options to choose from. So that's why we say this kind of a economic backdrop is very bullish for gold because it creates uncertainty, makes people nervous. Already we're seeing foreign countries that used to lend a lot of money to the U.S. They've been backing off across the board. They're not lending like they used to. They're not buying bonds like they used to. They're collecting more gold. And that's been going on for a year, two, three. And then you, when we first saw that, we thought, well, what do they know that we don't know? You know, that they're, they're up, they know something. And it's becoming more obvious that it's the debt. It's mm -hmm. the, they don't want to, you know, lend money to a debt-ridden country. And then there's a lot of other things involved too. The BRICS uh, organization getting larger and countries wanting to just, not have so much of their reserve in U.S. dollars. So that is all something that, depending on how it falls out, could really push gold up sky high. Well, yeah. gold, gold has been on the move as we were talking off camera a bit, but let's uh, let's stay on the top of here. So if interest rates are, are going higher and the national debt is going higher, uh, Pamela, how does that translate into the dollar, which is the third topic you discussed in New Orleans last fall? Well, the the the, may, the mega trend of, of the dollar has been down since the early seventies. Uh, that's that's the major downtrend. But it's been uh, it has its up move that last five or six years, and we are we're just kind of like near the end of the the last uh, strength of, of of the dollar within the downtrend. So this this is showing that the mega trend is still down, but that doesn't mean that the dollar the dollar the thing with the dollar is that it 
is the, the it's a safe haven for many people outside of the U.S. And people in the U.S. don't realize that, that they have dollars so they can go anywhere in the world with their own currency. No one else can do that. Everyone has to buy the dollar to go somewhere or buy the dollar to buy whatever. They always have to buy the dollar because that's the medium of exchange all over the world. So for that reason, it could stay steady. It could stay steady like this year. It doesn't necessarily go up, but maybe it doesn't. It just goes steady because that's what it is. It's the reserve currency of the world. And that hasn't changed. Maybe it'll change in the future, but it hasn't yet. And a lot of people like in, like in South America, for example, uh, I, we have talked to many people over the years, they use the dollar as an investment because their currency is way off. So they're preserving their capital with the dollar in, in, over the years. I don't know lately, but over the years, this is what they've done. And with the, and, and the interest rates rising uh, and many countries have their, their, um, their debt in dollars, which is really a bummer. And, uh, and, that, and, and that is um, a real hard thing for the, the global community. So um, this is why the dollar could stay steady because because everything else isn't good and, and, and it's a reserve currency. So steady, maybe down eventually, like in the next year, maybe two, but um, it could just stay steady for, uh, for now and next year maybe for that reason. But de definitely the mega trend is down there. Uh, it is losing its strength. And, and but it hasn't yet. Well, good good thing for us here in the U.S. and the people yes. with dollars around the world. But if you are a, a country that's outside of the U.S. and you have debt denominated in dollars and your currency is losing value to the dollar and the interest rates are rising, that just doubles your debt burden higher. Yes, yes. and yes. that's a reality right now, and and so that's going to hurt a lot of countries. Right. So that's. That's not good. And that's potentially a reason why some of these nations are also shunning the dollar and moving more towards a BRICS potential currency, which will only take away from the dollar over time, right? Yeah, yeah. over time, yes. They'll, they'll do all they can to keep trying that. They want another currency. Right. Well, speaking of another currency, the fourth topic that you brought up was central banks buying gold, which has been happening at a record level. Uh, Marianne, would you like to elaborate on that, please? Well, I, I think that, um, <clears throat> excuse me, that the central, especially China and Russia, but China, number one, they've been buying so much gold and they produce a lot of gold and you, they're just stocking up on gold. Other countries are doing the same. India, I mean, you could just name, you know, dozens of countries. They're all buying more gold. And I think the gold buying is just um, hitting new highs as far as central banks go. So as that trend continues, um, and where Pam was saying that the dollar could stay steady, I don't think it's gonna stay steady that long. I think it's steady now, but eventually with the, the way the central banks are buying gold, shunning the dollar, and the dollar doesn't have much of a leg to stand on, especially if we get this financial crisis that because of the debt, then I think the dollar could have a big, big fall. And once that happens, you'll see central banks buying even more gold. So the, the um, and like you mentioned, the BRICS potential currency, that's something that, you know, maybe downstream, but all of these factors uh, play very well for gold. Yeah, another thing too, well, that, oh, I, I oh. wanna just add one more thing. It's even, a, you know, another more positive thing, aside from the central bank, Chinese citizens have lately been buying a lot of gold. They're not buying cryptos, they're not buying anything else. They are buying gold because the value of their real estate, their apartments has dropped. Uh, the banks are on, you know, on thin ice and, and there's been several bankruptcies. And so the younger generation and even the older folks that to preserve their savings that they have are big gold buyers. Well, that ties into something that's happening here in the U.S. that's relatively new is Costco is selling gold <laughs> in their stores. And, uh, you know, I do business with one of the mint distributors that supplies Costco, and they're selling tons of ounces, literally two, you know, 100 million, 200 million at a clip when things are really moving. So, no, I, I think that's so interesting. Yeah, but Dana, how would they sell it um, if they wanted to ever sell that gold? How would they sell it? 
the, well, they can't sell back to Costco. I, re I recently had a young guy come in uh, and sell me about 20 ounces that he had bought just a couple months back. And it was all in packaging I'd never seen before, each coin individually packaged. And I said, well, where did you get this? And he said, well, Costco. Well, I know who who's creating the packaging. It made sense to me once I saw it. And I said, well, why are you selling it? <laughs> and well, we've had a nice bump in the gold price. As gold's gone up a couple hundred dollars in the last couple of months, number one. So he's covering his buy-sell spread on the physical. But this is the point that really got me. He gets Costco bonus points when he makes purchases. And when he spent $40,000, he said, basically, I can buy it from Costco for the rest of the year for free now with the bonus points I got on my purchase. Oh, oh wow. wow. That is, <laughs> it is. So it is legitimate gold. And you you would you oh, would yeah. receive it, um, even though you were, only because you know that, that individual. Mm -hmm. But could they go anywhere and sell their gold? Well, That's always kind of. They're not going to sell back to Costco. They have to go to a dealer like me to sell it. And it's all individually packaged. It was gold eagles and gold buffaloes and a few gold bars. It's U.S. minted product, which was nice for me to see. I thought it would, it would just be bars, to be honest with you, made by oh. a refinery. So well, isn't that interesting? But I have a question for you, Dana. Isn't it true that it's really just recently, and maybe Costco was the trigger, to see U.S. Uh, investors starting to become more interested in gold. Well, uh, it's it's hit and miss here. The uh, the rally that we've just seen in gold over the last couple of months, which has been really strong, um, has been based, I think, more on Middle East tension than anything else. But there's right. not a market fear factor here like we had in the great financial crisis or when COVID blew up. So the public at large has actually been selling more gold than they have been buying uh, oh, really? in, this, in this rally here in the U.S. Now, it's different around the world, but the U.S. is kind of counterintuitive that way. And we don't have a gold tradition like China does or India does or right. a lot of countries that have either had their currency fail or have had war on their sh on their shores. Right. We've had neither of those here. So. The traditional reasons to hold gold outside of, you know, your currency or for financial, for economic or geopolitical turmoil, you know, we've been insulated from that so far. You know, if we lose the world's reserve currency status, that will be a big, big problem for most Americans to wrap their head around. It would be terrible for you. It yes. really would be. You wouldn't be able to do what they do. Right, Exactly. And that leads to the fifth uh, topic, which is helping to drive gold higher in the short term, is, which is global uncertainty, which is uh, one of the other factors that you said was really impactful for all markets. Uh, and of course, we've got, you know, the, the war in the Ukraine and we've had the, the problem in Israel that's now, you know, we've seen Iran and Israel actually attack each other directly for the first time ever. So, yeah, yeah, that that is very, very uncertain. That keeps everyone. Uh, nervous because um, so far the latest one though they they both kind of said it's okay it's no big deal. Yeah, they're so, down they're downplaying that, but I think one of the bigger points that you made and it's kind of a stealthy one is the the tension between China and the U.S. Could you elaborate on that, please? Yes, the China U.S. situation, even though they've kind of they're trying to keep kind of under wraps, but there's you know U.S. ships are moving in closer. Taiwan, of course, feels threatened all the time. And Japan is nervous. And th those countries, I, I I, mean, they don't come right out and say it, but it's like they don't trust China. And I don't think that many countries do, um, especially Western countries. And they're just kind of waiting to see if China, it's not only like when, but I mean, it's not if, it's when will they make a move toward Taiwan. And that if that happens, that's going to add so much more uncertainty on top of Ukraine, on top of the Middle East. And with the Middle East is still something that anything could happen there. I mean, with, that's just kind of an up and down daily situation. And like you say, it's calmed down for the moment, but it's, um, it's, it's very uncertain. So we have a lot of global uncertainty, China included, Russia for sure. Israel, uh, the Middle East, now we have Iran. So there's a lot of global problems going on 
that do make people very nervous. And on top of that, there's a lot of angry people in the world today even that are even in a war, like the US, especially the, the people are very angry and they're very divided. That's another thing too, that is uh, not that any war would happen, of course, maybe civil war, but, but um, it's just a lot of uh, people are upset. They're always mad. They're mad at something and they're unhappy and whatever it may be that they're unhappy about, it, it just getting more divided in the hatred uh, and especially the political hatred. And uh, it doesn't die down. So that's another thing. And that's not only in the yes. US, that's in other countries too. In Europe, you see it too. They're all upset. They're, they're always ready to fight each other. And, um, and, and not to mention all the, all the guns. And, and, and so there's a volatile world today for whatever reason, there's volatility everywhere. And, and that's what's really uncertain. I think that's what makes people uncertain is the whole thing. It's the whole, the whole package is, is there's nothing really that certain. And, and when you look at all these things, and even though you'd like to think so, you have an everyday life that seems fine and that's good. But uh, yeah, hoping everything yeah. will just continue on as we've known it. But our friend, I don't know if you know him, Chris Weber, he's a, a very good writer and historian. And he recently said that something like 40% of US citizens believe there's going to be a civil war in the United States within 10 years. And it's like, that's crazy. It's like, who would have even talked that way last a year or two ago, you know? And yeah. so there's just a lot of, like Pam said, the, the heated arguments, families splitting up over, over politics. And you're just seeing a lot of anger. And yeah, I, yeah, I agree. It's really disheartening. You know, I, I used to like it when the middle 60 percent would would get get along to get things done. And you always had kind of 20 percent on each side that was right. Yeah. Far right or far left. And now we're split right down the middle. And, you know, in the U.S., I've never seen tension as high as it is in the country. So split, divided, which no. breaks my heart. I mean, we go back to the 80s uh, when I worked for Jim Blanchard and, you know, I met you through Jim back then. Mm -hmm. And um, that's that's when famously Tip O'Neill and Ronald Reagan could go fight during the day and go have a beer at night, which, you know, those right. days seem to be over now, sadly. But it's, it seems like yeah. tension is ratcheting up around the world. And I think inflation's bite is really hurting a lot of people, make them feel like they're not, you know, doing well right now, which makes sense. No, exactly. So that that's something that, it just adds to the uncertainty pile, if you want to put it that way. And so we don't know if anything's going to happen or when, or but it's something we really watch closely because that, however that unfolds in whatever area or sector we've been talking about could definitely push gold much higher. Yeah, Lori's on the alert. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. And I get your <laughs> weekly alerts and I love it when I get them. <laughs> so uh, speaking about technicals, that was the last thing that you said, uh, New Orleans, and blend there's technical analysis, uh, you know, which metal or which sector of the market might be better than another. And I really love the way that you cover all these markets in depth uh, using technical, technical analysis. I think one of your primary uh, tools is a 65 week moving average. Yeah, well, we've been doing with this since day one even before our day one of the newsletter. So we've been doing this for more decades when we, uh, for many decades. And um, we did this trial and error. We started getting our package together of what really works, what doesn't, and how does it keep working for the future? And there's some things that just continue to repeat that just, uh, you know, sometimes that really surprises us that, that it, it works. And um, so we, we really like that. We And we rely a lot of, um, our decision making on that and the, and the whole world, like how the environment is economically, politically, that we're always, um, that's always part of our um, technical and fundamental analysis. But uh, but this is uh, like for gold, we've done many, many um, analysis on that interest rates, the stock market, well, all of them, the currencies. And uh, that, so this is this, this in particular in gold, this rise we've had this year, was like an intermediate rise that was, um, that was, it, well, anyway, I won't get into that detail, but but it's an important one. And, uh, but the major trend, it's very interesting. It, it's saying, as long as everything continues and what we think is 
continuing, uh, we can see um, a, a wild good bull market for the next couple of years till say the end of 2026. That's when we see is kind of like, um, not a date, but a time period that we think that, that um, gold has really open potential and silver has even more. Um, and we're seeing silver just now waking up from, from practically dead, <laughs> but now right. uh, with, with, and gold and with copper right behind it, that really gives it the extra boost. So uh, it looks like copper too is in a breakout mode, ready to have its open potential too. So if those two continue, gold and, and copper, silver is gonna be the best investment. Yeah. We think it's gonna go way higher percentage wise than, than the others. So this is how we're seeing the next couple of years. We see it's an investment, it's a safe haven, it's in everything. And uh, we really think a buy and hold is, is what we should do today. Yeah, I just wanted to add one, one important point is when we follow the technicals, which we've done you know, hundreds of studies, uh, technical studies, but you can see, say if you're just following a certain market, but when you see in this case, gold or silver, and you see the technicals look wonderful and the fundamentals, what's happening in the world look wonderful for those markets. And then you've got the best of both worlds and that's when you know you've really got a strong market coming. It's already been happening, but it's going to continue. Wow. And that's what we're seeing right now with gold and silver. Mm -hmm. and, and, and same with the interest rates. They're, they're on the, that mega trend change. That's a big deal. Yeah. And, and a big deal for all of the world markets. And so this is, this is what we really keep our eye on, on these things and, and how their correlation works too. We correlate a lot of markets. And we also see that, like say like um, gold and silver have now been really strong, but platinum and palladium, they're gonna get going pretty soon, I think. Um, they're starting to look like they wanna go up and, and they're looking very oversold. And so they may, they may pick up too, they haven't yet. But when all of them are in bloom, that's much better for the whole world market. Right. Well, I love how you look at the big picture and then you put your technical analysis under it to follow it in the short term as well. And you have been very accurate in calling short term tops and bottoms in the bigger picture as cycles are either moving up or moving down, which is why I always look forward to, number one, the monthly newsletter for the bigger picture and then the weekly updates to when things happen in the short term. Uh, okay. Fantastic. Well, thank you very much. We really enjoy that. We 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 really get we really do we enjoy those intermediate moves that can last three or four months maybe one month and not usually but three or four five six months is what we really like on an intermediate basis and this is what we're seeing in gold right now this year, 2024, and so um, yeah that's we're seeing that as a very this rise just to to give you the bottom line instead of the technical explanation is that it's the the, the we're going to 2000. 2400 was a, an incredible leg up in the bull market. It strengthened the bull market. It made it into more of a, a breakout um, uh, that we think is coming. This is the beginning of it, this rise. And not to say it's not gonna have its corrections and all that, but this is what we see as the, the uh, re reconfirmation of the bull, of a stronger bull market. And um, so this leg up was very important for many things in the bull market. Because the bull market actually began in 2015 it started heating up in 2018, and now this is a new heating up. So this is how we're seeing it. Well, the trends that you labeled in New Orleans last uh, November are only being reinforced even more now. So that's mm -hmm. why it's important to follow these bigger trends. And your experience in these markets is unsurpassed, which has led to uh, wisdom that you only gain over years and years of doing this, which is why I respect you both so much. Mm -hmm. And I just love you both to death, too, because you're so much fun to hang out with when we do get a chance to hang out. Oh, so, we do enjoy it, too. <laughs> so uh -huh. I'm, really, I'm really flattered that you've, you've given and me the time. One, one last thing that I think is important, because a lot of people have asked us, oh, we missed it. It's too late now. And it's not too late to buy. Mm -hmm. It's, it, in fact, you know, with this, you know, the bull market has gone on for a few years, but we're just starting to enter the really explosive phase. So if you have um, clients that want to add to their positions or new buyers, it's it's perfectly fine, we think, to, 
find yeah. new positions. But like in this rise, if they get, if we get a, a little correction, which we're, it looks like we're starting, um, that would be the, uh, the ideal time to be getting it on some weakness. And that's that's what we're looking for. In fact, we're going to be buying more on this weakness. Right. So even though we're in a, in a hitting all-time highs, you think that this trend is going to continue for the next several years at least and perhaps yes. take the gold price to targets? Yeah, well, we think this is just, this rise is the breakout stronger bull market rise. And this is what we've kind of been waiting for. And, uh, and it's here. And so this is really exciting because the timing is so well. It's it's really worked out. It's worked out so far. And uh, so according to this, we could see if we compare it, say, we want to give a, a number on it. If we could, if we want to compare it to last, the last bull market, which was the 2000, 2011 rise, but many people can remember that. And that, um, if that equivalent type of rise would make gold eventually at the end of the rise in a couple of years, could be up to around the 7,000 level, perhaps. Wow. Well, and so that's the, that's the upside potential we see. And some people say higher, some say lower, but the point is it's going up and, and you wanna be on board. And that's what we think. And that's what we're telling our subscribers too. Well, when the market- when the market took off in the 70s, it, it went up 20 fold. When it took off in the 80s, it went up six to seven fold. So it's already up about double from the bottom. So a triple from here makes rational sense as far as, you know, from it my really, perspective too. Yeah, it does make sense when you're looking at a bull market. It's just when we, people are used to not having a bull market, that's all. And, um, and, and rightly so. But since 2008, everything has really changed. Uh, the whole financial, um, the whole financial environment has changed totally. It's a, it's in a new world, and we're still in it. It's getting worse. Yeah, I actually <laughs> think we're living modern monetary theory in real life right now with all the yeah. money that's going on, and we've never that's seen right. anything like this before. And that's just no. one fundamental among many. Yeah, that's Absolutely. why it seems disbelief because, we, like, just what they they um, there's the liquidity they made during COVID. Um, and after COVID, like it just doesn't end, and um, and so it's a seeing of that little bit of inflation is not really much compared to what's being done, and so um, that's, that's a good point. That's an interesting point, which is why inflation may stay stickier than Jerome Powell likes it to be. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very sticky. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm assuming it's a little warm in Costa Rica, and it might. We're at the end of the, the summer, if you want to think of it in those terms. So we're starting the rainy season, but you can see now we don't, we don't see rain right now. So it's been it's still a lovely day. Well, good. Well, I, I know it's the middle of the day, so I don't want it to get too sticky for you outside. So uh, <laughs> we're you. up in the so we're not too hot. Yeah. Well, good. Well, thank you, and thank you so much for your time today. I can't wait to share this interview with our with our clients and put it on our YouTube channel for, for anyone to see. And again, I highly recommend the Aiden forecast, the, the, the monthly newsletter for anyone who's interested in stocks and bonds, currencies, natural resources, precious metals. You track all of this in an extremely timely manner with excellent, excellent market analysis and well, thank uh, precision. Thank you very much, Dana. We yeah, really appreciate it. We appreciate it. it. It's my pleasure, and I'm honored to know you, and I always enjoy hanging out with you, uh, and I look forward to seeing you in New Orleans this fall. Yes. Okay, yes. thank well, you. We'll look forward to it, too. See you soon. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye -bye.